Hi, it's time for AutoCAD 101 again. Um, let's start AutoCAD. Um, already got it up already. Whoops, there we go. And let's bring over what we're going to do today. Your assignment, your, um, I'll try to get these attached on Windows as well, still working on that. Um, for those of you that I'm working on this class with, your instructor should have this handout. Um, what we're going to do today is deal with a few more things that are on this draw pull down palette. If we click the down arrow, you notice we've got these wiggly lines, these funny pointy lines, this kind of a dot thing, which you call points. Um, divide and measure, which are actually we'll use later, but that's actually not creating objects. It's well, it is, but we'll talk about that more later. Um, these three here. For the most part, well, wipeout isn't necessary, but these these are really 3D object creation devices. We don't need to worry about those. And then there's Donut and RevCloud. Um, we're only going to be using a couple of them for real. I'll go and I'll go through what some of the other stuff does. Um, but we'll start with um, the difference between a line. And a polyline. What are these? These are different. Um, and probably the easiest way to describe what a polyline is is let's. I'll draw one like we're doing the assignment, and it makes a little more sense. If we draw in the assignment, we say let's draw a line. We're going to draw a square, um, starting at one comma two. So line one comma two. We'll turn our ortho on. We'll also zoom in a little closer. So two inches, go straight up two inches, go this way two inches, and back down. Now we'll do the same thing with polyline. The actual command P line. The shortcuts, whoops, the shortcuts PL. We want this one to start at four comma two. So four comma two, 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 and close. Now let's go try to move those. So M is the shortcut for move. If I click on the one we do at the lines, it's four separate objects. If I go to click on the polyline, it's one connected object. And that's the difference. A polyline um, has all these separate vertexes. We can also select and give polylines width. Um, we're going to do that as well. Um, when you start the P line command, um, in this case, we're going to uh, start. We're going to draw a polyline from one comma six, so one comma six, and we want to assign a width. You'll notice down here on the command line we have arc as an option, half width, length, undo, width. So we'll just type. We want to do a width, so we hit W. And it's going to ask us for the start width. Well, we want that to be zero. And we'll give it an end width of two. And we want this to go two inches to the right. So we'll just go two now. And notice if we kept drawing, it'd give us a big fat polyline from now on. We assign that end width to two, and it's going to keep using that width until we tell it otherwise. So we could do that. We could say width, um, let's say one now, um, and one. and we could go another four inches and get a big huge arrow. That is how AutoCAD creates arrows, by the way. Um, I really didn't want to do that. For y'all's assignment, we, we got to do something over in this space, so we'll just click over here and get rid of it. And you're like, what did you just do, Miss Lane? What are those blue squares? Those things are called grips. Um, most objects, if you click on an object without a command, it'll show grips. The blue squares at the ends mean you can move that end point wherever you want to go. There's usually one in the middle, and that'll moving that just moves it like you're moving an object. Um, these can be really useful later when you're like, oh, that line, that wall needs to go over to this point. And so we'll start doing using those a lot later. I'll talk. I'll do a little video on grips themselves. When we get into dimensioning, oh, it can be amazing. Um, they're really useful in dimensioning when you're arranging the text. But we'll talk about that more later. 
Um, you won't need to do this. If you want to, you can. Um, I was just showing you that, yes, you can change the width um, midstream, per se, in the polyline command. Another thing about the polyline command, let me pick a start point just so we can get this again here. We can have them turn into art. You'll notice it defaults back to the last setting for width we had. Oops. Let's put the, the, hit a W real quick and put zero for start, zero for the end. Um, I could have it, you know, connect the points I'm picking with arcs. So let's hit A. And we pick here. Oops. We. It should be letting me pick. There it goes. Um, and so we could keep continuing along, and it would keep, you know, cause I think it's trying to snap to stuff's the problem, but it will keep creating arcs as we go along, and we can set the uh, the angle of the light of those, a whole bunch of other radiuses, the settings for those. I have never, in my the entire time I have done AutoCAD, ever used this option. Um, but it's there if you ever need it for some reason. Um, generally, if I'm going to draw a series of arcs, one of the options on arc is continue, and that's usually a little easier. Um, and I'll talk about that in another command too, but, but if you do the arc command and then do another arc, well, here, just pick a three-point arc, point, point, point. And now I go to arc continue, it knows to start, keep going from that last point. It'll make it a perfect tangent. Um, so that's real handy. Um, Still, that's not something we use very often in architecture. Um, one thing you might wonder to yourself, hey, that looks an awful lot like a rectangle. Well, congratulations. Um, pat yourself on the back. It is indeed a rectangle, and so are polygons. Um, just another way of doing things. One thing about these, and you notice when we click on the rectangle, it's showing you those two points. Whoops. I made the I tried to snap one thing that was silly. Um, the thing about the rectangles on those two points, let's see if it'll show it up. That's all it's remembering, those two coordinates. Whereas this line here, it's remembering that coordinate and that coordinate, that coordinate and that coordinate, that coordinate and that coordinate, and that coordinate and that coordinate. So there's four times as much data being used to draw this rectangle or square as there is on this one. So that's something to consider. Um, nowadays, most file sizes can get enormous and it's not a problem. Back in the old days, for us dinosaurs, um, we had to think about some of these stuff like this. All right, now we're gonna mess with this one, donut. What a donut is, is basically a circle with a thickness. Um, when we start the donut command, it asks you for an inside diameter. We'll just let it be with that. And you'll see how that works. The inside diameter from here to here was a half inch. The outside diameter from here to here was one inch. We can also do a, di a donut with a diameter of an inner diameter of zero. If we go donut, and we'll just pick a point. Um, and we hit zero for the inside radius, and we'll hit two for the outside radius, we get a solid dot. Um, that's exactly what we're going to draw with today. So let me delete that. We're going to start by drawing a line um, from five, five, that goes up two inches. So line five comma five, ortho is on, two, we're done, so we hit enter. We're going to place our donut right at this midpoint. So we type donut. And we want an inner diameter of zero. So I actually did that already, so I can hit enter. And an outside diameter of one and a half. Okay. 1.5 or 1 dash 1, 2, however you want to do it. Now we can place it by going, jumping to that midpoint. Remember, if your midpoints don't show up, this uh, use the F3 button to turn them on. If you don't have midpoint as one of your options, let me place this, type O snap. And remember, we can click in here. So if you didn't have midpoint highlighted, come here, click on that, and now fix it. One thing, you, you, you're trying to do this, and of course, you're in the middle of a command, you can't do your O snap too easily. If you're ever in that situation, ooh, let me, well, it doesn't matter. Here, we'll just do no donut again. Luckily, it's going to remember my 
uh, diameter settings. If you're ever coming here and you know, notice that you're one of the O snaps you need isn't there, and you're like, oh, I don't want to exit out. I've already done all this stuff. You can always type the first three letters. Like if I type M I D, it'll show that. If I hit my F3 right now and turn the O snaps off, F O snaps off. Okay, good. Oops, it's still doing it. Um, well, here we'll just start the command again. Oops, I actually placed it. I think donut zero one and a half. Enter. I broke AutoCAD. And 1.5, we'll just actually type it and see what we get this time. Okay. Oh, it's actually giving me some trouble. Um, if I type mid and come over here, it'll then show midpoint. Even though my O snaps are off right now, that F3 button set to off. So, you notice I don't get endpoints. All I can get is the midpoint. So if you're ever having trouble with it, no, I don't want that one. That's another option you have is type mid or whatever end, int, int for intersection, um, for the quadrants on circles, qua, qa. Um, so that's always another option if you're having trouble. But let's go ahead and place it. Um, I'm guessing it was having some trouble just then because I'm doing all this video capture. It probably has something to do with the video card. And that's why it was kind of hanging. Um, but let's look at uh, let's look at the next step, which I said that we wanted to mirror um, this line here. So mirror uh, the commands mirror the shortcut M I. We pick uh, mirror. We pick our line, and for the first point, I said we wanted that midpoint again. Oops, I do have to turn on my F three. I can click here, and then I said, type in five angle 45. And you're like, 45? Why are we doing a 45 degree line? Didn't we, you know? And then hit enter to save the objects. We don't want to delete the original. And you're like, we hit, hit, we just did a 45 degree line. Why did we, why did it put it here? Let's, let's actually draw that 45 degree line and maybe this will make a little more sense um we're mirroring um this line here the if we look at from here to here that's 45 degrees so when it makes that mirror copy of itself it's going to make a line over here that's also 45 degrees away from the line um this seems like, you know, really strange things to do. Why would you ever use this? We use it all the time when we're doing walls because you've got like five, ten lines or, you know, creating your line with the brick and the interior waterproofing and all this other stuff. So you can grab all those lines, hit mirror, click the end point at some distance, angle 45, boom, and you have the walls as you wrap the corner. Really fast way to do things. Um, well, here, let's draw one real quick. That makes a whole bunch of sense. Let's throw some lines in here, and I'm just going to copy them real fast. But let's say that's the thickness of our brick, and then we have the airspace and a, you know, and a vapor barrier, and then the stud, and then the sheetrock. So we've got all these lines drawn. We need the wall now to go up this direction. So mirror, we'll grab all this stuff. That's the outside corner, so we'll pick there and say, at... And in this case, let me turn the ortho off. We want to go this direction. Now you can kind of see why that 45 degree makes sense. We want to go this direction. So we'll go 12 angle. And remember that's 135 degrees. So, cause it's zero 90, another 45. So 135, enter. And we want to keep the originals. And this is where, remember I was talking about fillet radius zero being really powerful. F for fillet. My radius is set to four, I mean to zero, so I can just click on these objects using that right button on my mouse to, as an enter to restart. And there I have the corner of my building. Ooh, real powerful command, float radius zero. All right, we're not supposed to be doing that stuff. Back to where we were. All right, um, so that's how that worked. Um, that's all we're going to do for this assignment today. Fill out your little things, put assignment four. Oh, 
crap. I, oh, I mean, uh, that, by the way, that's a technical term. It means conditions really aren't positive. That's not a bad word. That's what that is. There's also situation has initialized terminally, but I would not say that one out loud. Um, but anyhow, that's the, all the stuff we're going to do for today's. Notice I still got it saved as assignment two because that's what I opened. That was dangerous. Here's that's real quick. Do save as and call it assignment four, and put wherever direct whatever directory we need to put it in. Um, here I'll just stick it in here. I've already got one, so let's make it four B. Although I think they're about the same. I use the other one to actually generate the handout. Um, so let's look at some of these other things real quick. Um, like splines. Splines, what spline does is it creates this continuous arc along all the points you pick. And you can kind of see that as it go along. Um, you can actually make it close on itself. That's one of your options down here. Um, we'll just hit enter to tell it we're done. The only problem with these is we don't have control of where all these other places where we picked aren't. And so from an architectural standpoint, we kind of want to know all those things. You see sometimes in landscaping, if you click on them, remember we were talking about grips, it'll show where the grips are. These are those points I picked when I was defining it. So you can come and you can adjust it, but you can see how we really don't have, it's not as big of a, we'd like to control this too, and we're here moving this. No, I don't want to move that side. So from an architectural standpoint, they're not that useful. Um, if you do use them, um, and there are ways of picking points so it um, has control vertices and all this other stuff. But if you do ever use this, pick a lot of points. And so then, oops, let me get out of it. I hit my F1. Escape. Now you have a lot more points that you can adjust, and so it's less likely that you're going to, as compared to here, I went one, two, three, four. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but architects, we don't use them that often. Um, they'll use them a lot in other things like engineering where they're calculating all sorts of stuff once they create things. Um, they'll create solids and they can create um, where they're rotating about and all sorts of stuff. Um, you can also use them to create, you know, uh, you know, if you're doing some sort of charts and stuff like that, you can then calculate the area under them and all this other stuff. That's really crazy. We don't generally do that. Architects aren't math people. Um, these two things are some of the dumbest commands ever. This is called a construction line. It's an infinite line in two directions. Yes, we could zoom out forever and ever and ever. You'll never find the end. Why? Um, array, which is the next one, is an infinite line, but just in one direction. Why? Um, if you're like me, if I'm trying to line stuff up, which is what it seems like they use them for, I just use the line command. Um, but anyway, um, points, points are a pain in the butt because they're a point. Um, you can't see them very easily, and they have a tendency, and I saw this once where this, uh, this drawing had a whole bunch of points, and one of my co-workers, she was working on this drawing, and she kept going, copy and would grab every whoops copy and would grab everything and so there's every time she copied there were more and more points and she didn't realize why her drawing got so big and was causing trouble this was back in the stone age and we couldn't handle really big file sizes not so much an issue anymore um I'm going to show us how to use a command called divide later, where we can evenly divide up an object. It doesn't actually divide the object, it just puts little points at the equal divisions. Um, and we'll talk about that there, and that's a good place where you need to make sure you delete those because it just looks like a line. You can't see the points on the line, and so it's very easy to start copying extra stuff by accident. Let's see. Hopefully everything's still working. Um, Divide, there's a divide command and measure. Um, we'll talk about those later. These 3D things, um, that's you really don't need to mess with that. Um, the last thing we need to talk about are rev clouds. Rev clouds are just a bubble in, an, in a drawing that says, hey, we made a change and this is how we indicate it. 
Um, for our purposes, we're going to do a rectangular one, play with them, have fun. But we're going to place a rectangular one at, I think it was 1,8. Doesn't really matter. We're just wanting to look at it. I didn't even tell you, you know, don't pick, you know, just pick some point for the second point. Doesn't matter. And notice it's just a series of arcs. We can set what those arc sizes are. You'll notice we have a minimum and a maximum arc length. If we want to change that, we could have typed A. Um, it default to the rectangular setting. This way, if we had just typed rev cloud, that generally lets you just kind of pick points. Um, it depends. Um, let's hit freehand for our option here. Freehand. Do, 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 and sometimes we need that free hand. You'll notice it automatically closes for you. Um, but we do this in, in construction drawings. Uh, if we make changes that are called addenda, um, we'll indicate the addenda to the contractor with these red clouds for a revision cloud. That's what it stands for. But let's erase these two. And this is sort of what your drawing should look like when you're all done. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot.